What is up everybody, Grenader Jake here, and today I'm gonna bring you a sponsored video on a game called Dreadnought. It's an epic space shooter that I've actually played before and made YouTube videos of before, so you likely recognize it. It's a very cool game, it's available on PS4 and on PC. Today I'm gonna kinda go over the different classes of ships available, the different game modes available, some strategies for how to succeed in the game, and I'm gonna try to convince you guys to play this game on your PC and your PS4 because it's awesome and it's free. Now, let's get into the different classes available. So there are five classes of ships available. There's tons of different ships you can use, but only five classes that kind of separate them into categories. This one right here is called the Artillery Cruiser class. It's kind of like a sniper ship. This one right here is called a Tactical Cruiser. It's kind of like a, a healing ship. This one right here is called a destroyer which is kind of like a mid tier in terms of health and damage and speed ship so you've got like middle of all those worlds this one is called a corvette and for a reason it's extremely fast can deal a lot of damage but extremely vulnerable too and then this well this is called the dreadnought what the game's named after this ship has a ton of health can deal a pretty good amount of damage too but man is it slow all right, let's discuss the different game modes that are going to be available for you while you're playing Dreadnought. So one of them that is available only on PS4 is a game called Havoc. It's you and two other buds, so a team of three fighting enemy hordes and trying to get to the furthest wave possible. There's a link on the screen right now of me playing that with Mr. Fruit and Datto in December. I recommend you check that out. Now, there's other somewhat complicated playlists and a very basic one as well. Let's go over the complicated ones somewhat quickly. I want you guys to kind of discover that for yourself once you dive into this game. There's a game called Conquest, which is kind of like, you know, you're controlling different points on the map, but there's a huge twist in that the bigger your ship, the more area you are controlling. And it's based, the, the winner is based on how much of the map is controlled by that team. So smaller ships control less, bigger ships control more, and you try to spread out and control as much of the map as possible. Again, still kind of learning that game mode myself. Don't quite understand it completely, but I recommend you dive in and check it out. There's another one called Onslaught, which is another pretty unique and somewhat complicated game mode, which involves eight versus eight. The teams fight each other, trying to earn points by killing each other. There are bot ships, very weak bots that fly around. They, if, if you kill, you gain a little bit of points. Then there's a master ship on the other side, the team's captain ship, basically. And if you kill that ship, you get a ton of points. So you have to kind of decide if you want to focus on the enemy players, the enemy bots for small points, or the enemy captain ship for big points. Now let's get to the simple stuff. The simple stuff is great because it allows you to kind of understand and learn the game. The simple game mode is called Team Deathmatch. You fight other players, you kill other players, you get points for killing other players. In Team Deathmatch, the game is won by reaching 100, and each kill is worth 4 points. In other words, 25 kills will win you the game. There's also a game, mod game mode called Proving Grounds, which is fantastic because it's not actually PvP. You're fighting bots in a Team Deathmatch to learn the game, to understand the ships, and to kind of better your skills. All right, let's quickly discuss strategy in Dreadnought. The first thing, it's very simple. You want to choose the right ship. Now, you might not even think about it, but the right ship is all about what your teammates choose. Let me give you an example. If you are all using the Corvette-style ship, the fast and little armor one, you're going to get destroyed. They're, you're going to get shot down. They're going to be ready for your flanks. They're, you're not going to have anything that can take a hit, right? So if you see that there's a lot of Corvettes, you might want to choose the Dreadnought. Be the one that takes the hits. Be the one that's armored. If you see that there's a, no healers on your team, maybe you want to be a healer. Basically, you want to counter your teammates' choices and make it so you've got a well-rounded team. Now, something that's really unique about Dreadnought is if you are not succeeding, if your game is not going well, you can change your ships mid-game. And honestly... I think this is one of the most important points I'm going to have this entire video. People forget that you can change your ships if things aren't going well. If you're getting your butt kicked and you don't know why, you should try to think about what's missing in your team. Do you need more healers? Do you need more DPS? Do you need more long range, more close range? What is your team lacking? 
fill that gap, and it's going to give your team a much better chance to win the game. This next tip is going to be important for beginners and for people who have actually been experimenting with Dreadnought a pretty good amount. If you click E on your PC while playing, you're going to bring up your power-ups. There are three different power-ups. There are thrusters, which enable you to go faster, shields, which protect yourself, obviously, and then there are weapon enhancers as well. So those are your three options. You don't want to forget about those. On the right-hand side of your screen, you'll notice a number that goes up and down when using them. If you use it, the power goes down. Once you stop using it, it starts recharging. So you want to use them pretty often, but you also want to be careful. And something that people forget about is that you can cancel it at any time. Let me give you an example. Let's say you're in the middle of a fight. You're getting hit pretty hard. You press E, you pull up your power-ups, you make it so you have shields. Great. Now you start running away from the fight. You got away. They're not shooting you anymore. Guess what you should do? You should click E again so you stop using that shield unnecessarily so you don't have a longer reboot time. Does that make sense? You want to, you know, use your power-ups as much as possible, but if you're using one unnecessarily, it's going to make it so you can't use one for a while after. So use it as frequently as possible, but also make sure you're not unnecessarily using them. Click E to cancel those power-ups once you're away from the fight. Now that we understand how to use our power-ups effectively, let's talk a little bit about the different weapons that you've got equipped. If you press on Q, you're actually going to switch your weapon on your ship. And what this is going to do is allow you to do different things with said ship. Let me give you the example of using an artillery cruiser. This is the sniper ship I was referring to earlier in the video. So this primary weapon is a sniper. It's long distance. It deals a ton of DPS. You only get to shoot one shot every three or four or five seconds or so. What's that mean? Well, it means you're extremely vulnerable if an opponent rushes you. Well, thank God when you click on Q, you're going to pull out a nice close distance weapon. So that's all I got to tell you guys is press Q, experiment with the two different weapons that each ship has available so you know when to use each one. At the top of the screen, you will see four icons. These icons are called modules. Modules are basically specialties your ship has. They can be offensive, defensive, they can be somewhere in between. And what makes these modules so awesome is they are completely customizable. So based on your play style, you can choose more offense or more defensive. Whatever it is module that you think fits your play style the best, you can select. And also, as you play more and more Dreadnought, you will unlock more options for your modules so not only can you completely customize your modules for your ship but you can master ships to a whole new level once you start understanding modules hey uh you guys ever heard that there's no i in team wow pretty crazy right well let's use that to talk about how you can improve in dreadnought well you got to play as a team know your part it seems simple, but it's very, very important in this game specifically that you know what you're supposed to be doing for your team. And what I mean by that is if you are a healing ship, you want to make sure you're behind the teammates that have a lot of health, kind of topping off their health bar as they get shot, make, making sure that you focus on the teammates that are weakest. If you are a sniper ship, you want to be behind your strong teammates so they can take the hits for you while you are sniping from behind. If you're using the Corvette class, you want to use your teammates as a distraction while they're shooting so you can kind of flank behind to get some nice angles on the enemies while they're not prepared for it. Know your part. Pay attention to what your teammates are doing. That is the only way you will succeed in Dreadnought. All right, now here comes the fun part. So yes, this is a sponsored video, meaning I was paid to make this video, but I was not paid or instructed to do what I'm about to do. And that is try to convince you guys that you should try this game out. Dreadnought is really, really unique and really, really interesting. What makes it so special is it kind of works for any kind of gamer. If you want to just, you know, choose one ship and master that ship and just absolutely destroy everybody because you are the best at that ship, that's totally cool. That totally works. It's going to take you a long time to master them because there's a lot of things to remember. Each ship comes with four specialties. You can see at the top of the screen, understanding what those all do is going to be hard for you. And using the, uh, the power-ups as well with those is going to be complicated. It's going to take a while to master any ship. But if you do master a ship and you want to try out a different one, there's plenty. There's five classes and so many different ships in each class. It has ridiculously vari variable gameplay. Um, and there's so many ships and so many perks and so many things that you can try. 
that it is going to work for any gamer. If you want to keep it simple and just focus on one ship and play Team Deathmatch, that's going to work. That's kind of what I do. It's a ton of fun. But if you get bored of that ship quickly and you want to do other ones, I'm telling you, the option is there. Very fun game. Lots of game modes available. Lots of ships available. It's only getting bigger. It's available on PC and PS4. Highly recommend you guys take a look at it. It's a game that I'm going to be playing probably about once a month off stream, just when I want to blow some steam. I even play it every once in a while on stream, and I'm not getting paid to do that. It's just something I think I want to do after playing this game a few more times. It's getting a little bit addicting. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I also think I will have a link for you in the description with a free download. Not 100% sure, though. You should go scroll down and take a look. Thanks for watching. Have a good rest of your day. You're all cute as holy hell. Goodbye.